Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Can you hear me? I uh, can't hear you. Okay, there you go. Maybe we're on mute. But Susan's joining us now. Hi. Hi, Susan. Good morning. Good, good morning. Wait a minute. Did my video start? Oh, there we go. Hi. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Excellent. Good morning. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to be seen. <laughs> How are things out in Peabody? We're doing okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got a we've got a Passover boot camp tomorrow with uh, the whole school through Zoom. Wow, good for you. Yes, yeah, so I'm just getting together some. Uh, uh, pages that we can follow along with the whiteboard, you know. Yeah, excellent. Follow along, which has been great to share. So, hope I, it's, it's been very responsive. We've gotten a lot of good responses from kids, from parents. So, so will it be families great. together, parents and kids together? Yes, we're we're inviting them all. I mean, uh, the few times that we've invited parents, they've always just thrown their kid in front of the, the screen. So, I'm assuming they're on the in the background. So it's good. We've been very fortunate so far. And we're not stopping anytime soon. <laughs> oh, my. It's so nice when the whole community can come together. I really, I've, I've loved seeing that. And the kids really enjoy it, too. They love this whole screen thing. They do? Yeah. How, how are you finding it? Feeling it exhausting? Um, I mean, it's exhausting looking for new ways to make this work. Right. But my teachers are very good. They're a very good resource. Um, and they've, most of them have risen to the occasion, which, right. which is nice. That's right. My buzz is going off in the oven. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, Michael, what is this black thing over here with me? Oh yeah, on the left of your screen, it's a shot. It's on maybe on the camera. Oh, thank you. Oh, is that it? Look at this. I have this new thing. I have this paranoia, Michael, that I'm going to forget that my um, my video is still on. And so I have this new little thing that I can <laughs> just cover it up at the end of every call. I have an envelope. I just yeah. put it like that. Yeah. Whoops, it fell off. Can you, um, can you tell me, if I look at this screen here and I read from this screen, um, am I, is that the best way? To... Yes. Yeah. It looks like you're looking right at us. Okay, good. Cause I, okay, so tell me if I'm, cause now I'm going to do mine. Yeah. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Cause I have two screens. So that's what it's a bit. Yeah. I actually just printed my material off. Um, so, uh, we'll I see. Did, I did too, but it's, uh, I found that it's better not to, because your head goes down when you're looking down. I know. It's just better I know. than the screen. Well, the good news is I got up. I actually like brushed my hair this morning and I put on jewelry <laughs> and <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah, they said lipstick is the most important thing. <laughs> I know. Beth, oh wow. That's uh, a name from the past. Hi. Hi, Beth. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm at home. Good. Good. I'm at home. How's everything down there? It's okay. <laughs> um, it's well, tough. You know, it's it's really tough. I'm trying to get my video to work. For some reason, it doesn't want to today. Okay. There we go. There we go. Oh, great. Good to see you. Wow. I know. It's great to see you, too. Um, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's it's been a little... Um, challenging um i live by myself so it's uh it's it's quiet and a little too quiet and you become a little complacent and a little lazy but um i have been doing a lot of virtual stuff with my kids and doing bar and bat mitzvahs online and um doing uh the classes online and um hebrew classes trying to get my teachers set up on zoom which is a little tough because 
Many of them are completely computer illiterate. Um, so we're having some issues there. And, um, you know, I can't see my grandkids other than on FaceTime, which kind of sucks. Uh, but other than that, I'm hanging in there. Good, well done. That's a lot yeah. of hard work. Wow, you've done amazing. It's, made, it's great to see you. And uh, Great to see you guys too. Thank you for coming in today. It's really fun to have everyone back again. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, the best way I to know. do it. Hey. Yay. Excellent. How's everything going there? Yeah, well, we closed the college about two weeks ago. Everybody went online. And of course, for, for Shulman, it hasn't been that bad because the Schoology, you know, was going on right. anyway. But for the rabbinical school, we had to help them go on to Zoom. And they've been struggling with that a little bit, but doing better and getting there. Right. And, um, yeah. So and then we're all in different places, although it feels like I've been meeting with Susan and Marion all, all week. I don't know. <laughs> preparing for this, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, hi Eileen. Hi. Hi, everybody. Eileen. Hi. Welcome. Uh, nice to see you. I hope everybody's well. Good yeah. morning. Um, as, as everyone starts coming in, welcome Beth, welcome Eileen. I can't see who else is on yet, Michael and Susan. I just put a link in the chat for our first little do now activity. Um, I hope everyone, does everyone see that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm also going to share my screen momentarily. Um, and I'll, God willing, be able to do two windows, one with our agenda and one with the answer garden. So Beth and Eileen, if you want to be our nachshonim to play along. <laughs> the question of all the Zooms I've been doing, the one thing I haven't figured out how to do is to open a link in the chat and have it open at the same time as Oh, I'm so glad you said that because that actually was on my agenda to make sure people know how to do such a thing. So the key is to minimize the Zoom window. You know how to minimize with the yellow circle yeah. up there? So just make it, you know, make the Zoom window smallish and, and shove it over to the side and then open up the link and you'll have your other window open and make that one smallish so you can have both on the screen at the same time. Okay? Yes. Beth, are you, do you know how to do that? Too? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, great, good morning. It's Marilyn. Okay, I'm about to get the agenda up to, um, okay, give me a sec while I play with all this. I hope I can do this. Oh, that's how we do it. Oh, I'm about to share this. Host disabled. Debbie, is Debbie on? I'm here. Debbie I'm on. I, yeah, um, it's saying I don't, I can't share my screen. I thought I was the host. You are the host. Can you look, can you, um, what do you see on the bottom? It says when I click on the share screen, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Um, I guess you have to make me the host you, again. You so. are the host. Hold on a second. Yeah, it's oh. bizarro. Oh, that's really weird. Okay. Um, Maybe go out and in again. Me? Yes. Hold, okay. oh, actually, hold on a minute. Good morning, everybody. As you're coming on, we're just trying to get it's so that I'm the host and I can share things with you. While you're coming on though, look in the chat box. I put a link to Answer Garden. So please go there and do that little activity. And as you play, if you don't know how to have two windows open at the same time, See if you can minimize your Zoom window and push it over to one side. And then when you click on the answer garden, that should open in another window and you can minimize that and have the two things open at once. It's not, I don't see anything in the chat yet. Okay, so that's another little challenge. Hold on, because I think I learned the other day that if I put it in before people are on. Right, right. I, I just put it again. Great, got it. Marian, can you tell me if you can do it now? Okay, Raga, I'm trying. Nope, it's still saying host disabled attendee screen share. Can you log on and off again? Of course. Thank you. 
Hi, everybody. Hi, morning, Debbie. Good morning. <laughs> this is Robin. Hi, good morning. Welcome, lovely to see you. Rochelle's here. We have a lovely, lovely group. It's growing super duper. Michael, the problem that I'm seeing with the, the answer garden thing is that you're, it's asking a, a question, but it's only giving you like um, 10 20, characters. 20 characters I've got on mine. Unfortunately. Yeah. I, yeah, when okay. Marion comes back, Marion set that up. So when Marion comes back, let's, let's talk to her about that. Okay. I'm back. I thought I enabled it to have 40 characters, but if not, just the whole idea is do it short. It's 19 <laughs> characters. It's a do it short. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm one word. step back. I don't see it at all. Okay, answer so garden. Where there. should I see it? In the chat, but also Debbie. I still can't share screen. Oh, okay. Deb. I hear you, Marion. Hang on. Hang tight. I'm fixing it. I'm tight. trying. Hi, good morning, everybody. We're hanging tight with technology as per usual. Good to see so many people. Sandy, hi. It was great to see you the other day. I learned about the drive-by. Great to see you too. Hello. Did you, did you hear about the uh, birthday parades? I heard yes. About Those are amazing. Yeah. Marion, you there? I am. Can you try now? I will do my best. Hold on, let me get back over there. I was going over to the answer garden to see if it's working, which it is. Yay, I can share. Awesome. Okay, so hold on and just bear with me while I now make my screen the um, slide. Can everybody see my the agenda? Whoops. Yes, there we go. Can everybody see the agenda now? Yes. Great. And now I have to play with um, seeing if I can get the answer garden into a smaller window to share with you as well. So please bear with me. This is the first time I'm doing this, sharing multiple things on the screen. Okay. Jewish, Jewish educators. Excuse me? The things we have to learn. Right. Does everybody now see our answer garden? Yes. Okay. So those of you that haven't yet had a chance to put in your ideas to share a topic and a challenge. And the, the link for this is in the chat. And I just am refreshing to see if we'll get, if I get more along. Okay, I think the momentum was a new one. Right, has everyone had a chance to, to share in the answer garden? So Marion, now that I see your screen up, um, I can't, I'm not sure how to then re find my minimized uh, go to escape timeline. go to so. escape which will take you out of the main thing okay is that working eileen go to a screen that will take me out of the main escape. thing escape. the escape button up in the upper left hand oh the oh okay yep yeah. okay okay got Great. it all right, so good morning. Thanks everybody for playing along. Thanks for being here. We're so happy that you've taken some time this morning to be with us. Um, and we really hope that this will be the beginning of a series of sessions that we hope to provide um, during this crazy time that we're living in. Um, part of what we're hoping to do is of course, get to 
be together in community of learners, create this virtual community of learners, or build on our current community of learners, and share um, content and techniques, and share together the challenges, the successes that we've all been having, and really be together to support and learn together. And I'm just so excited to see friends and colleagues from really near and far. I see our colleague Susan Yammer from Jerusalem, um, our, I, my Siri just thought I was talking to her, <laughs> um, but nice to, nice to see Susan Yammer from Jerusalem and again, friends, sorry, sorry, Siri thought I was talking to her. <laughs> so good to see everybody. Um, I'm going to move back now to our agenda and um, welcome everybody. So. Does everyone see the agenda now? Okay, great. So to start with, I want to do a little, literally a two minute exercise, one minute exercise that we've been doing in our program that we do collaboratively with the Institute for Jewish Spirituality. We call it a Hineni moment. Of course, I, everyone knows Hineni is the word from the Tanakh that our forefathers and hopefully our foremothers used when they encountered the divine to say that they were here and ready to do the work that was necessary of them in those moments. So for us, situate yourself if you're sitting, wiggle your hips around, Plant your think of yourself as being in a Hineni moment. And you can close your eyes if you'd like and just think for a few minutes, where are you right now? Where are you physically? Where are you mentally? Where are you? Are you ready to be with us? And if not, be gentle on yourself. It's absolutely okay to, that your Hineni moment is that you, hold on I'm just also seeing someone saying to mute everybody I thought it was um Debbie can you mute everybody anyway good morning again so Hineni where are we where are we check in with yourself those of us that have been sitting at our desks like this for hours on end, if you want to stand up, stand up. If you want to stretch, stretch. If you need to change chairs, change chairs. But just check in with yourself of where you are. And when you have a minute, you can put in the chat where you are to, so we can all acknowledge who's present with us and to be able to say, I'm not really here right now. I'm worried about how I'm going to cook for Pesach. Or I am hoping that I get to go out for a walk today because it's finally so beautiful. Or if you're physically and mentally and emotionally here with us, that's fantastic too. So just take a minute. And as those answers come in, I welcome everybody, wherever you are physically, wherever you are emotionally, I see someone saying feeling drained, to be here now and to be with us. And I'll tell you now a little bit about what we're going to do. I'm gonna be moving the agenda off the screen shortly. So just um, take a look at it. We're going to, I'm now just going to welcome everybody again. Again, so nice to see so many colleagues and friends from all over the world and all over um, our community, our community of learners within the Hebrew College community. I see current students, alumni students, and of course, so many of our local community educators who participate with us in so many ways. We welcome everybody. So the objective of today and of this series is that we wanted to create an environment during this time that would be generative and be a place where we can continue and begin to really learn together in community. And I'm sure all of you have experienced these last number of weeks. Um, for some of us, it's been over a month already. Um, this is challenging. This has been a whirlwind and a whiplash of events and responses that we've need to take 
personally. Some of us have had physical and medical challenges in our own families, and of course that takes its toll. Um, but what we wanted to do was to do what we hope we do best, which is to come together in a learning community, to think about our students, to think about ourselves, to nurture ourselves, and to be in a proactive stance. There have been so many wonderful, wonderful activities and moments where we've been able to con convene in communities, whether you've been doing it for your students, just to sort of maintain a sense of normalcy for them during this time of being able to see each other. But we really wanted to make this series Again, an, a continuation of the kind of learning that we hope we've done with you up until now and that we can do going forward. Of course, this is an experiment like all of this work is during this time and we welcome your feedback and your ideas. And if it is successful today, we are committed to doing it again on April 20th. And of course, we'll send out a, a reminder. Um, and we hope to do it, God willing, um, another three or four times between now and May. Um, so just walking us through any questions. Okay, great. So we're going to have basically two chunks of quote unquote real learning, content learning. Our first with Rabbi Dr. Michael Shire, uh, the Dean of the Shulman School. The second with Susan Morell, my dear colleague from the Shulman School. So that's numbers four and five. Um, we'll then debrief Susan's activity, of course, to, and connect it to Michael's as well and look back at our answer garden. We'll then move into hearing from you. What are the things you think you need now? What can we provide in these three or four sessions that we'll plan? Um, we'll then do some singing together with one of our cantorial students, David Wolf. We'll reflect on the whole experience, and then I'll keep the room open for a number of minutes if people want to schmooze. Um, I hope that we'll, can, we'll conclude the content part of today in just about an hour at 11.15 Boston time. Um, and again, keep the, I'll keep the room open uh, for another 15 minutes if people want to schmooze. How's that sound, everybody? Okay, so I am going to turn this over to Michael. I'm just going to put the answer garden up for everybody. And Michael, I don't think I ever got your slides. So where are those? Okay, uh, I sent them to you, so you should have them. Um, Let me take a look again, but I couldn't find them. I saw your notes on the slides, but not the slides themselves. Um, Debbie, do you have, is Debbie still there? You should be. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and look for them again. But Michael, I'm, send my, um, I'm sending it to you right now. Okay. So, my, oops, Michael, why don't you start while I get the slides up? Okay. Uh, we just need slide one to be available. Okay, the setter. So, everybody. Um, um, okay, why, if you want to, why don't you add something to the answer garden while we're doing that? Okay. I just emailed them to you, Marianne. Mm -hmm. If you if you want, I can like I can start, and then maybe you'll catch up. I'm I'm here. I'm I'm getting there. Okay. Well, it's beautiful to see everyone. I want to, um, while, while we're just getting ready for that, I just want to give a big shout out to Seth Goldsweig, who uh, is on here. And Seth, uh, as many of you may know, is the vice principal of the Jewish Day School in, in Toronto, Leo Beck, and is defending his doctoral dissertation this afternoon at two o'clock at Lesley University, or kind of virtually at Lesley University. Three o'clock, three o'clock. And um, Seth has done a fantastic a dissertation on sustainability for Jewish day schools. Um, it's going to be really interesting to, to, to listen to his defense this afternoon. And um, Seth is, uh, is the number six, I think, of our doctoral dissertations from Leslie in our joint program. And um, we, have, uh, we have one more to go after that. We, we, um, we're really delighted to have uh, this kind of creme de la creme, we might call you, of, the, uh, of our students who have uh, 
worked so hard on creating a doctoral dissertation and defended it and successfully received their PhD. Um, and we look forward to, to more people in the future, if you're interested in that. Um, so Marion, where are we now? Oh, I thought it, you don't see it. I thought I shared. Oh yeah, there you go. All right, we're ready to go. Okay, so good. I'm going to get going then. So I, I, I want to just say how wonderful it is to see everybody and what a wonderful opportunity to be together uh, in these difficult circumstances. But um, it's a real community that we, that we learn together and we have been together and, and this is uh, an opportunity for us all to, to have this moment um, amongst all the communities that we're sharing with. We are continuing to pass through this modern day plague of this virus in our isolating homes. And we've seen the many ways in which people have supported each other in their care and concern all around us. And most of us have seen how our health professionals, our doctors and nurses have stepped towards others in providing the healing and help that's needed at this crucial moment in this global pandemic. It really takes a step of courage to move towards those who are ill and they have done so with, with such a marvelous uh, alacrity. And as governments around the world are calling for self-isolating in quarantines, they're labeling these workers as essential services. And these people include those providing our food supply, providing care for the vulnerable, ensuring our safety and protection. And it goes without saying that we are relying upon them. Uh, and as I can mention, Queen Elizabeth said to us, uh, the Brits last night, this generation will remember in years to come how we responded with self-discipline, with resolve and fellow feeling. So I want to suggest that in a different way, teachers are essential services too, particularly teachers who offer spiritual health cultivation of care and community, and a practice of virtue and ethics for students and their families. Now we are all about to enter this Pesach season and we'll be planning a Sadarim completely differently this year, but the message will be the same as a call out for hope and freedom from the passing over of this plague. And we will read again of the four children in the Haggadah and our responsibilities to understand and respond to them. We learn about the children first in the book of Exodus, there in chapter 12 and 13, on the uh, real knife edge of the Leil Shemorim, the night of watching, Moses addresses the children of Israel. And the final plague, which is about to be enacted, and the moment of redemption from slavery is at hand. What was it like for the children of Israel in Goshen to watch nine previous plagues from their isolated homes? to see others suffer while they were shielded. How frightened and anxious they must have been. They packed their meager belongings and they took their unleavened dough just at the moment of midnight. And at that moment, Mo Moses does a remarkable thing. He doesn't speak about their sufferings. He doesn't point to the destination of the promised land. He doesn't mention their freedom. But what he does remind them is that the children will ask them what happened here and what does it mean? Now, as you probably can see, uh, hopefully on the screen, uh, three of the four children with their questions appear in this section before the Exodus has taken place at this very moment when Moses was is addressing the people. Now it's a moment of uncertainty for everyone and their existential questions are very different, each one. The first child we meet is actually the question of the Russia, the wayward one, the one who separates from the community with their question, what does this service mean to you? This person feels outside of the experience. What does she feel about her alienation at a time like this without rootedness or fellowship or family and friends around her? The next one we come across is the Sha'eno Yodelish Ol, the one who doesn't yet know how to ask. She has no question yet. She's a wanderer. She's just confused and bewildered. How can all this be happening around her? And then thirdly, we have the Tam, the one who's willing to learn, 
who has a simple question, mazot, what's going on here? How can I make a sense of a world turned upside down? These three are all living with deep uncertainty and they need their questions of faith answered. They are not looking for more knowledge or content. They need help with the anxiety of what happens next. In this moment of immediate redemption, Moses takes notes of them, reminds us all to hear them and find a way to respond to their anxiety and confusion. Tell the story of your children. Moses speaks to the generation down the ages, to all of us even, reminds us all of the crucial lessons of the day. We are all anchored in a creation that has purpose and goodness. The answers come in the words, because of what God did for me when I came out of Egypt. It's the quality of our response to the questions of uncertainty from our students that marks us out as essential services. They have the questions and they need the answers. At all other times in Jewish observance, we depend on the adults to lead. Here at the Seder, it's the state of imperfect knowledge that gives the child the leading part. The unattained certainty is what makes it essential to listen to the child's questions year after year. Through them, we will learn the promise of redemption for every generation. Acknowledged uncertainty, says Robert Coles, the famous psychologist. It's the stuff of spiritual learning. Now the fourth child, the Chacham, and you may have been wondering where he or she was, comes later in Deuteronomy. In fact, is mentioned after it's all over and done with. Maybe that's the time for content-filled instruction and the Chacham is ready to ask for it. He or she asks for Edot, testimonies and Chukim rules and Mishpatim regulations to learn at that time. Now we know that these four hypothetical biblical children, three who appear right before the Exodus and one who turns up in Deuteronomy at the end, they're turned into a Midrash by Rabbi Chia in the Talmud. And we actually know a bit about Rabbi Chia, which helps us to understand the text a little bit further. So who was Rabbi Chia? Well, he was a really creative educator of the rabbinic period. As you can see here from the quote in uh, Talmud, he brings flax and he plants it and he weaves nets from the flax fibers. And then he goes out and traps deer with the nets and feeds the meat to orphans and forms scrolls from the skins of the deer. And he goes to a town that has no teachers of children in it and writes down the five books of the Torah for five children and teaches the order of the Mishnah to six children. And to each and every one of these children, he says, go and teach what you have learned to your friends. Obviously the originator of uh, project-based learning and expeditionary learning and collaborative learning, all the great words that we use today. And what does the Talmud think about him? It accords him the highest accolade. His actions are considered even greater than the author of the Mishnah itself. Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. His role was considered absolutely essential in empowering the generation. Now we happen to know one more thing about Rabbi Sia from the Talmud. He had four children, which is kind of amazing to learn. He had two twin boys and two twin girls, Judah and Hezekiah, Pasi and Tavi. He obviously knew something about raising four children four children who are going to sustain Jewish life and living in future generations. Four children who have very different ways of seeing the world and have very different existential questions to face. But whenever the Midrash of the four children in the Haggadah was illustrated, it wasn't actually done with actual children. In the medieval Haggadah, it's always adults who are depicted as the children. So what does that say about this Midrash for us reading it now. I suppose in moments of deep uncertainty and soulful reflection that we're in right now, in these moments, these moments 
of living through history, we are all, adults and children alike, affected by the questions of concern and care that acknowledge we cannot know what comes next. Many have asked about the nature of this outbreak. Is this the blunt instrument of a creation rebalancing itself in the face of our destructive force on the, on the climate and the environment? Is this the moment to reflect on the nature of what is important of life inside and outside our homes? Have we listened enough to the cries of those we see every day but ignore? The lowly paid, the elderly, the immigrant refugee. We have work to do in responding to Mazot. What happened here and what does it mean? Our teacher, Abraham Joshua Heschel said, the significance of Jewish education therefore does not lie in its being conducive to the survival of this particular people, but in, in its being a source of spiritual wealth, a source of meaning relevant to all peoples. I would like to suggest as a goal of Jewish education that every Jew become aware that Judaism is an answer to the ultimate problems of human existence and not merely a way of housing observances. So we as Jewish educators gather together need to respond to our current predicament, knowing that the wayward, the willing, the wanderer, and the wise are all mixed up inside each one of us. And that the people, adults, families, and children alike that we serve feel the same. There is a freedom that comes from knowing the answers that faith can give to our deep questions especially at a time like this. And learning this freedom is to truly offer a gift that offers faith in a time of uncertainty. And it is essential that we continue to serve that purpose in our synagogues and our schools as Jewish educators. So I want to thank you for doing the work you do, for participating as essential services and for being together as a community today. Thank you very much. Marion, you're muted. So. Thank you. Yasha Koach Michael, really beautiful. I hope that everyone was able to take in the learning and to also take in the visuals as well and the, the wise words, both of Michael, but weaving together the wise words of our sages, both more contemporary, like Rabbi Heschel and more historic like our uh, Talmud. Um, part of the, today's opportunity was to sort of situate this in some content like Michael just did, some historic content, some uh, textual contact, content. And now I'm going to transition to offer to Susan Morrell to sort of share with us some conceptions of how we do this pedagogically um, in within the classroom and to situate it within some of the learning we know about social emotional learning. So Susan, I am going to share your PowerPoint momentarily. Michael, you'll probably see there's a bunch of accolades coming in. Please, of course, um, share any questions. We'll try to get to them uh, when we have the time later on. Um, and while I'm seeing Seth's face in the um, chat there or in the boxes, mazel tov to you, wishing you lots of success today. Um, all right, I'm about to share Susan's PowerPoint and Susan, why don't you can say a couple of words um, while I'm getting that up, okay? Thanks, Marian. First of all, just thank you. It's, it's really nice to be here um, and for everybody to set this time aside, there's a lot going on. I don't know about all of you, but it's pretty overwhelming with the amount of resources and opportunities out there. Um, so just want to say that I appreciate you being here and taking the time to learn and uh, to reflect uh, and to be together. Um, so what I'd like to do now is just, we're going to take about 10 minutes and we're going to go through an activity, but we're really going to focus on ourselves first. 
And then when we debrief, we can talk about possibilities um, for using this tool or, or parts of this tool in other parts of our work and with our students and of course continuing on with ourselves. So I want to take a few minutes to think about the past few weeks. It has been an absolute whirlwind. We were all thrown into something that we never expected. We've been through a lot and, and many of us I'm going to dare to say most of us, if not all of us, have not really had the time to reflect. And it's, it's hard to take the time to reflect on our actions and our thoughts and our feelings when we are in the midst of an experience. Time is scarce and emotions are really stretched. Um, we are taught that there are two times to reflect, as you can see at the very top here. We can reflect in the experience while it's going on, and we can reflect on experience after it has happened. Those are two very different things. What I'd like to focus on is the reflection on the experience, what you have all just experienced. So if you, on your screen, um, is uh, a description of the cycle of reflection. So at the top, the first step is a description, what happened. Um, then if we move to the right, um, we go to feelings. What were you thinking and feeling during that experience? Then we move down to evaluation. What was good and bad about the experience? What worked, what didn't work? Then we move into analysis. What else can you make of the situation? and then the conclusion and action plan. There is so much to say about all of these, but we do have limited time. So we are just gonna focus on the first three, the description, the feelings, and the evaluation. So you can flip that slide, Marion. <clears throat> so in just a moment, I'm gonna ask you to think about one particular situation that happened in this experience. We all know what happened in the world and in our schools and having it closed down, um, but I want you to think about one particular situation um, during these past few weeks. Where were you? Who else was there? What was going on? What was the challenge? And I would love um, just one or two people in really just three or four sentences. Again, there is so much to say, but I'm going to ask you to narrow it down to three or four, excuse me, sentences about what happened in a particular situation. So, Marion, I don't know if you can see the whole screen. If somebody is a volunteering, if you could either just raise your hand or let us know in the chat box. Okay, am I muted or am I with You're still on. Okay, so I see Lori, Rini, are you raising your hand? No, okay. I see Lori to start. So Lori, why don't you, you go first? And then I see Great. Alan. Excellent. Hi everyone, I'm Lori Kipnis from Kesher Newton. Um, so my youngest daughter is home from college and uh, not thrilled about that, but um, we're trying to have moments, good moments together. Um, but we had a, a situation happen. We, we try when the weather's nice to go for a walk outside and we've been covering our faces like everybody, uh, well now, is recommending. Um, and the other day we were walking around town and we were getting what felt like dirty looks for covering when nobody else was. We saw one other person out of maybe 20 people we saw. Um, we saw a group of people meeting in somebody's um, um, driveway people we knew, so we knew they were not from the same family and they were standing really close. And then at one point, a small group of people walking a dog kept coming closer and closer and closer to us behind us. 
when we got home, my daughter was really shaken. She felt like she had been violated. Um, and she was really anxious and she felt like she was never going to go out again. Um, and I had to balance my own sense of being shaken and, and not sort of not trusting my community, which I thought I could in the past. Um, and feeling really uncertain about how to calm her and acknowledge what was happening and all of that while I was feeling some of the same feelings. Thank you, Laurie. Um, that's really helpful. So you were able to describe what happened after the fact and then also what you were thinking about and feeling, which are really two different things. So thank you. I'm going to ask, um, who is one more person who was going to share, Marion? I think it was Marilyn. Are you ready, Marilyn? It wasn't me. All right. Does any, is anyone else open to sharing? And feel free to just, you, you can write things in the, uh, Robin, you can go ahead, but everybody else, if you want, you feel free to go into the chat. Wait, I see Beth is willing. Okay, so Beth, are you unmuted? Yes. Okay, great. Hi. So I think the, the what happened was the very first time that the rabbi and I did a virtual Shabbat service from the sanctuary. We had to sit in the well of the sanctuary, which is and and put a podium in between us, which and sit very far apart, um, where we're usually right up on the bima in front of the ark and and we had to um, you know have this service in front of an empty congregation, in front of an empty sanctuary. And that was both profound and sad. And the, and the reason why I say that is because we did it via Facebook Live. And in watching all of the people who were watching us, it was interesting to, to visualize all of these people that we very rarely see come to Shabbat services physically but they were attending Shabbat services with us. And then over 600 views of people that just viewed the Shabbat services on their own because we recorded it. And, and so it made us really think about maybe this is something that we should be investing in by streaming the services for those people who might, might otherwise not be able to physically come to services when it is time to reconvene. But it was... Um, it, it was it, it was really um, telling and and very um, very emotional for me and, and I think for the rabbi as well but it was really super emotional for me being in that congregation for 23 years and not seeing people sitting in those seats. Beth, thank you, Beth, very much. So again, one step is what happened. Not even to make any judgment on it yet. Um, but and then what were you thinking and, and feeling? Because this step really this step really helps us with self-awareness. So as we recall the experience, we think about now, not when we're in it, what was going on inside your head? You know, what were you thinking about? What did you feel? How did other people make you feel? Right? Naming those things afterwards has great power. Uh, Marion, we're going to move on to the next one. So now I want to quickly go into the third step in the reflection process. Um, and I want to think about what were the positives and the negatives about the experience. And again, I want to say that again, the negatives and the positives. So it's important to consider and to, dis and to distinguish between what went well and what did not. M what might require more balance? So I'd like you to take a look at this listing of midot, of Jewish virtues. And um, I want you to think for a moment about the questions are at the top. What midah, what Jewish virtue did you find particularly challenging to navigate. Now in the first story we heard, what I heard there is um, maybe patience, like it was 
hard when we were outside walking. Like I'm usually patient, but it was really difficult to be patient. Another question is, what Mida did you find easier to balance? Now, let me give you an example. If you think on this list about the virtue of generosity, I mean, we all think of generosity as being wonderful. Um, but really, the key is to find balance in generosity. So if um, during all of this, you happen to be really wonderful at technology and you spent a tremendous amount of time um, generously giving up your time to help others navigate their own. And so you were extremely generous as far over as you can go. I'm going to suggest that maybe you need to find more balance and we need to pull back into the middle. So each of these has both a positive and a negative aspect to it. So for those that you, who study Musar, this will probably come a little bit more easy, easily. Um, so I'm gonna ask for a couple of volunteers um, and, and um, also to people to put into the chat ones that they found easier to navigate and ones that um, were more uh, challenging. So um, it's a chance also to be a little bit vulnerable it's not always easy uh, to um, acknowledge and share some of these, um, but I'm wondering if anybody would like to um, tell us uh, what they chose. Ra I see Robin, because you're on my screen. Robin, go ahead. Well, I think I might be muted. Oh, no, no I'm not. No, you're I, not. So, I, I don't, so, it was in the moment that I was thinking of, it was slowness to anger. Like I got really angry really, really quickly. So mm. is that, that's easy or that's hard? You tell me. Well, it was really easy to get angry. And okay. it was hard to motivate. It was hard to moderate the anger. So that was particularly challenging for you then. Like for you, that's something that because of the stress or whatever that that is, a little bit more challenging to navigate. Yes. And then like the opposite side is, but I was also having a really hard time though. I wanted to be empathetic to the parent. Great. So those are both the same or those are not in that. Sense. I think there's lots of nuance in there, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a question now. One, because I know you and I know you're, uh, you have many gifts. So I want you to look at this listing and is there one that was a little bit easier for you to balance? So you said empathy and slowness to anger were a little bit more challenging. You need to be more aware of them. You need to reflect on them. Do you see something on this list that for you was easier to balance, easier to navigate? In that moment? Yep. No. Okay. <laughs> no. But, you know what? Even my, like, I want to say order, but even in my, def like, that's like out of my defensive, like, tendencies. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. And we could put that on there. There's, I think there's one up there that says truth, Robin. So there you go. There's your one that's easier to balance. Um, Take, thank you. Let's take one more person and then we're going to come to a close. Is there one more person? And uh, Marion, if you could help me because I'm not seeing everybody. Oh, Rini, I see you. You're on my screen. Hello. Hi, Rini. Um, for me, uh, I, I wrote that the positive was uh, gratitude and the part that I had um, more difficulty balancing was honor. And it, it was a situation of my one of my daughters who is in the healthcare field and was really very um, definite about what we, her parents, should and should not be doing sooner than all the, um, sooner than it was coming to us, to all of us um, from, from news, et cetera. She was kind of ahead of the curve with that. And so I we were grateful for her caring and our other daughters then following suit and being very caring and being very 
uh, definite about what their parents should and should not be doing. Um, so we were very grateful, but on the other hand, we were having trouble, my husband and I were having trouble honoring that knowledge and that caring that they were giving us because we were still, and the interesting part is now, I really think about it in terms of the 10 plagues. You know, at which plague have we all said, okay, you know, we, we really need to pay attention. We really need to change our ways. And, uh, you know, I, I really see the progression of our being able to honor what they were, what she was telling us and in, in their sense of protection for us um, along that continuum of the plagues. Thank you so much, both to Robin and to Rini um, for sharing. Um, right, so, so these, yeah. Just also note that plenty of people, thank you all, have been putting it in the chat as well. So we all appreciate your vulnerability and your honesty and your willingness to be engaged in the topic. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. I'm looking at these right now and seeing them from uh, equanimity and trust being challenging, um, humility, silence, patience, but especially attentive listening being a little bit easier the diligence and strength um, being a little bit um, more difficult. I see someone wrote, it's challenging for me to love God right now. You know, that is certainly a challenge. Um, so these midot, these Jewish virtues come directly from our teaching, from our tradition. And by doing this activity, we're really anchoring our learning directly from the wisdom of our tradition. And that is part of what we hope we are doing with ourselves, importantly, with ourselves first and our students, to tap into the stories um, of our tradition, the experiences of our tradition, the wisdom of our tradition, through our own stories, our own personal experiences, and our own gained wisdom. So I have always been inspired by Rabbi Sachs' thoughts on how our reflections connect us uh, to our ancestors throughout time and space. The experience of our ancestors and how they persevered, what their feelings and thoughts might have been at the time, and what they may have discovered and uncovered from their experiences. So as we think about what we've explored together in just these few minutes that we had today, I hope you are all inspired to bring your new understandings to your own Seder, and to your students as they enter Pesach. So thank you very much. Yasha Koff, Susan, thank you so, so much for sharing. And what, I just want to pull the agenda up for a second for myself just to double check how we're doing. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. So thank you, Susan. And again, of course, thank you, Michael. And thank you to everybody who's been participating. So. Um, in such a participatory way. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Lori, for the, <laughs> the icon of the... Uh, um, so what I want to do now for a few minutes is just to sort of put some closure on what Susan just did. And I hope also everyone are beginning to see the threads of this session this morning. Of course, Michael brought us right into the Haggadah with the four children. Susan is leaving us at a moment of thinking about the Haggadah and the importance of telling our stories to our children, to the next generations, that of course we all do professionally, day in and day out. And then of course, during our family times, uh, we have the opportunity to do that within our family units. So I wanna reflect a little bit and just sort of throw out a couple of the frames that Susan used in her activity. And of course, I'd be open to hearing from others. Um, so for sure, you know, as I think people know, Susan has spent a lot of her professional life focusing in on social emotional learning. Um, she's done a lot of beautiful work with that, um, both here at Hebrew College and in much of her other work. So some of the things that she brought to us this morning were sort of the first sort of the self-awareness the moment of sort of asking us all to think about something that happened to us and to slow that down and to think about it in a descriptive way. Then to think about it in the self-management kind of way. 
what did we do in that moment and not to be judgmental about what we did in that moment. Some sort of social awareness, who else was involved with us? I think Beth talked about the relationship with her rabbi in that moment of feeling, you know, that she was in a social moment with him or her and also the social moment with the people who weren't physically there, but a social awareness about how we're part of an entity. When, we, when Susan asked us to look at the Midot and place us along some continuum, it sort of helped us to focus on our own responsibility for our actions, whether they be good or bad, um, and, not to, and not to sort of label ourselves as good or bad, but to understand that we're all always along some continuum. This power in naming our thoughts and our feelings, sometimes that puts it out there so it allows us to be more gentle with ourselves and to think about we're all, we all have all these attributes or have the p potential for all the attributes for good and for bad and being able to name them and put them outside of ourselves gives some power to that. Um, I think sort of most importantly, and I hope what one of the messages of today's session is that these are all very human experiences as sort of as unusual as this moment in our collective time is the it is part of the human experience part of the human experience of course is meeting all kinds of challenges and traumas and tragedies and one of the beautiful things about the human humans is that we have resilience and one of the th beautiful things about being in a community of faith and a community that is anchored in text and memory of our ancient past um, we know that we can get through with resilience and so, and with that, the sort of the other side of the resilience is the vulnerability. So those are just a few of my thoughts about Susan's, what Susan was trying to do. I'm wondering if anyone else has some observation they'd like to make, either about Michael's session or about what Susan just shared. Anybody? Um, maybe I'll, I'll just... Um can make a connection between this um, work of social emotional learning and the nature of what I think we do when we think about our tradition. Sometimes it's hard to find the connection between what we're trying to teach, the what of what we're trying to teach, and the nature of who the learner is and where they are coming from, whether it's our families or our students uh, or indeed our colleagues. And uh, I think that the moment we're in, this historic moment, um, just highlights the fact that we have a lot of wonderful treasures um, of discernment, um, of midot that Susan gave us, um, that allow us to really bring um, a source of meaning to the people we're working with. And um, I hope that that's something that uh, all of us as Jewish educators will kind of renew and find again the spirit of uh, seeking out the ways in which, as Heschel said, that um, what we are doing is so essential to the time we're living in. Um, and I just also want to make it explicit, as you can see, the way, the beautiful way that Marion has constructed our time together is, is not only for us, which it is, and I'm grateful for that moment actually to be with you, but it's also as a model for what we can do with others. So if you want to take this model and use it with your teachers or with, with others that you're working with, your parents, uh, then you know, feel free to, to think about ways in which to highlight these parts of the things we should all be thinking about while we're doing Jewish education at the same time. Thank you, Michael. I'm just putting in the chat a link to a Google Doc that we'll use momentarily. Um, so really the next piece of our agenda was really to open it up to the group. Obviously we haven't gone through our entire session yet, um, but really to ask this group of educators again from literally all over the world, literally at all different places in their um, careers. Some, some people, I see some of our current students who are, you know, 
in this moment of pause in having had, you know, not being able to be in their student placements even at this time. So just want to open it up to the group. Um, what, what would you need at this time? What, what are your needs um, that, you know, we can talk generally um, and you can certainly put things out that have nothing to do with Hebrew College um, but, or things that you think would be valuable and powerful to, to continue in this community. Um, so I really want to open it up, take a, take a few minutes to think, again, about what we've done so far this morning, um, what you know is out there in the world, all the millions of resources that have been coming out to you. And also, of course, um, I actually wanted very much to have this session today, um, even though you know we've all been so inundated, because I wanted us to, to be able to plant some seeds for people to think about while we'll have the little bit of a break professionally over Pesach. So take a minute now, if everyone can just sort of think, what, what would help you right now, again, either professionally or personally, and again, something that Hebrew College can help you with, or of course, something that we as part of your community can help you work through. So take a minute, and if you want to write it, or if you want to open open up your your mute and uh, talk. Oh, I'll go. Go ahead. Thanks, Robin. Um. So this is like anything, right? Anything. Okay. So I'm feeling like I'm constantly in and out of different webinars with different configurations of educators and um, would appreciate like a smaller community of practice, maybe of like as small as six to eight. I think one of the things I've learned is any more than that in a um, Zoom room, it's too, it's, harder to every, for everybody to have a voice, but really to share best practices. How are we already thinking about religious school next year? Um, how are we dealing with some of the tech issues? Um, and also to be reading um, some articles and kind of thinking about it from a higher level. Like, so there's like the nitty gritties, but also I'm interested in like getting myself out of the coronavirus world and thinking big. Lovely. Thank you, Robin, for sharing. Fantastic. Do I see, is Deborah Gardner unmuted? I didn't have anything. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Laura. I think, Robin, what you said really resonated. I think that right now um, it's been wonderful to get to gather some uh, with, our, with our teaching team. Um, and get to share some ideas and reflections and what's working. And I know I have at least one of our Makor and Prozdor teachers who is on this call. Yay, thanks Ruth. Um, and I've been, um, yeah, I've been particularly craving time to connect with other folks who are in the position of helping sort of run and launch schools online and care for the pastoral care needs of our families and and students in this time and sort of how best to be serving our families and students in this unusual time, um, particularly as a smaller group. So I'll just put that out there in case you want to talk sometime. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Fabulous. So I'm already beginning to see our little kernel of, of a little group to begin. Um, anyone else? Yes, I, um, I work with um, education directors and early childhood directors. Um, wait, can you see me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm Robin from uh, Palm, wherever yeah. you are. Palm, from yeah. West Palm Beach. Um, and I, I need, I think Robin is spot on because um, I need ways to continue helping them help, you know, achieve their goals in this, this time of what school going to look like next year. What are the opportunities? Um, what are more ideas? Just, you know, a, a place where people, where I can help them launch whatever they want to do in their schools. Lovely. One of the threads I'm hearing is also, I'll get to you, Eileen, I see your hand up. 
um, and hearing a thread also of like, okay, I think we're done with the shock and awe of, you know, how do we get through the immediate? And now it's like, let's be realistic of whether, whether this continues the isolation through the fall or it doesn't, what do we need to be doing to be preparing beyond um, April, May, June? So I, I'd love to hear from Eileen and just I want to plant something. Is anyone on the call involved with summer camps? Because um, I'd love to hear if someone is. Okay, but so Eileen, go ahead. Um, so I actually, uh, Robin, you sparked um, a thought in my head because on one hand I'm thinking, you know, God willing, we get back to September and we're sort of back to, you know, quote unquote, the old normal where we get to see each other and we come to school on Sundays and we come to school on Thursdays and we come to, and now, you know, I'm really, I've been thinking about whether or not, you know, we go back to what we had, you know, yearning for that, or is there going to be something, you know, a, a different model, you know, our parents going to say, uh, oh, we kind of like this, you know, some from home, some from school. I, and I don't know what the answer is, but I appreciate the question that was raised and would absolutely um, be interested in, in having more conversation about that. Beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Andrea. Hi, uh, I'd like to add what was just said. Um, I'm, by the way, possibly accidentally uh, here, uh, Shakar Colt invited me. Uh, she invited the Dorshade SEDEX staff. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, no, but- Intentionally here, it was open to the, yay. <laughs> our whole community. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Everyone seemed to be Hebrew college. I mean, I know some, I know some people here, but from Hebrew college. Um, but uh, on the matter of, you know, whether fall, first of all, practically will be able to get back to things and whether everyone's going to want that, um, I do a lot of work with the inclusion at our school. Um, and we've had the, the interesting, I see connections, we've had the interesting situation of there being some students for whom this is like beyond disaster, can't, can't attend. Um, or just pretty much getting one-on-one -on -one support for the parent for what's going on in their household. And other kids for whom the model of Tuesday teaching going to private tutoring has been an incredible blessing. Um, and not just for the, for the kids, but for the teachers in some cases. I am loving uh, getting to work with some of my students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I've seen very little conversation. Most of the conversation has gone with the learning disabilities equal all is bad, bad, bad right now. Um, and I've seen very little conversation about the people for whom it has been good and perhaps better and perhaps a model to be taken forward. Lovely, really beautiful. And I, 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 could, I couldn't agree more because I think there are so many things that we're learning as people jumped into the technology, people, of course, who might have been very resistant before and are seeing the upside of some of the technologies. And of course, yes, we are, there's a lot of discussion about the downside of the technologies, but I think we do not need to harness the upside as well. And that is something to continue to explore. Any, any other thoughts about what you would like to see, what you need right now, what we could continue to do in this group? Any thoughts? All right, thank you, thank you. Um, we're gonna move on to our um, number eight on our agenda, which were our closing blessings. And I am going to share my screen. We have one of our cantorial education students, David Wolf, who he's gonna be, um, he's either teaching or taking a class at 11.30, so he recorded himself. And if you see in the chat a few seconds ago, I put a link to a Google Doc that are the, the lyrics to the song. So everyone, why don't you get yourself situated with the, the song and I will open up David's um, and share with you David singing for us and any of you that have um, had the opportunity to sing communally during this time. Um, you'll know that if you are unmuted, it's a real cacophony, which has its power. Um, so, but 
it, it also, I think, has been very powerful to sort of sing, sing to your heart's content, muted, um, and know that you're in community with us. So does everybody give me a thumbs up if you have the lyrics up? Good, people have the lyrics? All right, I'm gonna open up David's um, YouTube. Um, and I hope that um, I do, I have the right kind of, oops, the sound correct. So I do hope that this works. And I, uh, hold on. Let me, I'm also going to, hold on. Jewish. I'm going to mute myself and you'll give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if I'm muted, if you hear David, okay? Because I'm not sure about that. Educators. Oh, that you okay. are All right. loved. All right, so I have to keep myself unmuted. I'm gonna um, start the YouTube again and I'm not gonna sing out loud. <laughs> so that Can you we just tell us again where the, where the lyrics are? It was in the chat oh. here. I, I wrote it at 10.55 a.m. It's a Google Doc. People see it? No? All right, then I'm going. Okay, Janet. no, I see it. I see it now. Thank you. Janet, okay. I'll try. No, I mean, it might be people might just want to like listen because they'll, yeah. know, they'll know it. And then they, yeah, you'll know it as soon as you hear it. We and asked David to do this for you. So for something to take in, it's a gift to you. Good morning, esteemed. Okay. Good morning, esteemed Jewish educators. This song is to tell you, perhaps to remind you, in case you forgot that you are loved. For our teachers and their students and the students of the students. We ask for peace and loving kindness, and let us say Amen. And for those who study Torah here and everywhere, May they be blessed with all they need, and let us say Amen. We ask for peace and loving kindness, and let us say Amen. We ask for peace and loving kindness, and let us say Amen. We ask for peace and loving kindness, and let us say Amen. We ask for peace and loving kindness, and let us say so Yashika to David, I hope that that fills everybody up with a little bit of Ruach, a little bit of Chizuk. Uh, support. Um, what we're going to do, we'd love to set, we end with blessings. That was blessings from David to our community. Um, if everybody wants to unmute themselves and just one word of blessing to, to our community, I'd, I'd welcome that if you feel like doing that. Susan, I see you unmuted. Oh, <laughs> peace, 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 shalom, wholeness. Okay, one word. Eileen. I was going to say health and strength, but I know that's two words, sorry. Robin. Gratitude. Deborah. Health. Laura. 
vision and creativity. Uh, Robin, Robin Hurwitz. Um, compassion. Seth, are you with us? Oops, I can't, okay. Um, Beth Pamacor. Um, hope. Andrea Kimmons. Rafua Schlema. Uh, Judy Greenblatt, have you been with us? <laughs> Unmute. Every time I have forgotten to unmute, um, health. Thank you. Susie, are you with us? Kindness. Thank you. Tracy. Medic. Michael. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I just want to thank everyone and, and the gratitude of being part of this wonderful, holy community. Lena. Connection. Beautiful. Laura, did I get you? I don't remember now. Janet. You're, you're muted. Joy. Yeah, fair. Did I get everybody? I think I did. Oh, who's the who's the, the teacher from Makor whose name I don't know? <laughs> I'll unmute myself. I would say Hachlama for everything in this world. Thank you. What's your name? Ruth. Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you. All right. So I want to just share blessings also of real gratitude, Hakarata Tov, to everybody in the group today and to my colleagues, Michael and Susan in particular, but Rachel, who's been on. Oh, Rachel, I didn't ask you. Do you have a, a bracha? for everybody. Toda. Um, so gratitude and to Deb Einhorn, who's teaching our graduate students right now. Thank you for my team for pulling it together. If you want to stay on, um, I'll I, two things. I would I'll do some sort of wrap up review of what we did to sort of unpack this pedagogically to potentially for you to think of a structure like this for your own students or your own staffs. Uh, we'll do that for about two minutes. And then I'll, again, as I said, I will leave the room open for people that want to schmooze. So feel free to hang up if you'd like. I'm gonna um, just bring the agenda back up and share it so that um, I, I will do this brief review and reflection on, the, um, on what we did this morning. Can everybody see the agenda? So as um, I said when we began, part of the objective and part of the motivation for us to do this and also do this on this date and not jump into the fray like so many of our colleagues did in such an amazing way back when everything first started was we wanted to slow down this new reality for us and to sort of be cognizant that we as educators have an absolute opportunity right now to be crafting something new that we happen to know a lot about in the 21st century. Um, again, I can't say enough of how in awe I am of all the day schools, congregational schools, camps, synagogues, all the various um, orbits that we live in, Hillel's that have jumped on board and maintain a sense of sacred community during this time. So I want to look at the things that I did today in crafting this and really open it up for discussion with you. Um, many of you know, many of you have participated in the kind of online learning the Hebrew College has been doing for over a decade and they learned about creating a virtual learning community. So first and foremost, you see I did a do now, so that knowing that people often have time, you know, sort of come in early, um, sort of get people right into the activities. Um, and there was love that when I came on a few minutes, um, you know, a few minutes before we started, but there already were four or five people in. And of course, there was beautiful schmoozing and connecting happening. But the do now, have some activity and think about your own classrooms, how you know that having a do now is a way to sort of focus everybody, bring everybody back into, or bring them into what this community is going to be. 
So that was the first thing. Um, the other thing, and Eileen um, had to um, make sure that everybody in the room knew how to have two windows open at the same time. And Eileen asked me even before I put the, um, you know, put this up here. Um, but that too, sort of to check in with your community, especially now after we've been doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks, sort of to slow it down again, to see if people know how to actually make use of in the best way possible of the Zoom. I can't tell you how many calls I've been on, I'm sure you all have too, where the minute some, a second window gets open, every, oh, I lost you, we don't know where you are. Um, what happened, did I lose you, did I lose you? And so get to slow down so that everyone feels comfortable in the community. Um, so that was, that, that was sort of my first thing. The second thing we did was the Hineni moment. And I gave everybody permission to sort of get comfortable. We're all so used to now sitting at our desks and staring at the computer, but there's nothing wrong with standing while you're in one of these. There's nothing wrong with getting up and moving um, and to sort of check in with yourself and also check in with yourself. Similarly, even when we're in the classroom, thank you, Michael, for, for modeling the standing up. <laughs> um, you know, how present are you? I know some of you have seen some of the mood meters of, you know, from a one to a seven, one being like, I can't concentrate at all. I have no idea why I'm, I even bothered to log on to seven being I'm totally here. I'm totally ready and everything. Um, but to give yourself permission that it's okay not to be totally present, but also to remind everybody that it's okay to move around. It's okay to like, readjust your chair. It's okay to sort of just take a breath before we start. Um, that too, I'm sure many of us have been in back to back to back meetings, whether it's with our own students or as professionals. Um, just give yourself a break and give, give your students that time also to take the breath and be ready to be present. Um, then of course I tried to walk us through what we'd be doing and, and I had this agenda important to let people know where we're headed, how much time. And I actually said, you know, we'd be done by 1115 with the core stuff, just to give people a roadmap. Um, again, kids or, ch or adults, just knowing where you're headed. Um, and then of course, the actual, you know, the actual learning that took place. Um, Susan's session, Michael's session, uh, the debrief, and then of course, um, what we've been doing. Just putting there, reflecting on what my process was in crafting today, some of the sort of pieces or ingredients that I try to make sure are present whenever we're doing a synchronous virtual thing. So any questions, any observations, any additions, um, any things that sort of, wow, that really didn't work. I can't believe you thought you were going to do that. Um, and also I'll just, I'll share something else. Um, I've been teaching virtually and using webinars really for a long, long, long time. The very first time I taught online was probably like 2002 when I did a community practice with Peach. Um, actually, Seth's off the phone now. I think he was in that COP back then. But just sort of like to be vulnerable, like I still don't know all the technology and to kind of, you know, just not come off as an expert, but come off as like... Like I'm futzing around with this just like everybody else's and um, like, let's be gentle with ourselves. So putting it out there, any, any comments, observations, thoughts? I did hear that um, people would quite like to have a, like a haver or a small group to work with. And maybe next time when we, when we gather, we'll, we'll take some time to split off and um, take some season time with, with colleagues and friends, maybe who are alike or in different parts of the country or sharing experiences from, from similar institutions. Uh, it'd be nice to, um, to have that sustained conversation that we can't normally have, even because we are all over the country. So, uh, and great to, to connect with people as well. For our family Seder on, on Wednesday night, we're going to um, do a meet and greet for the first 30 minutes because there'll be so many family members that people haven't seen for such a long time. So having that time to do that um, is also important. Lovely, lovely. 
I think that is one of the challenges of a session like this where we don't necessarily know who's coming on. But again, if we move forward with this, and it was so wonderful to see so many people who are connected to us in so many different ways, whoever said it felt like a very Hebrew college session. I think that was sort of the thread that held us all together. But I don't think everybody in this group has a deep I, I certainly am not assuming everybody has a deep connection to Hebrew College, but of course we are the ones that facilitated this. Um, but really a lovely thing to do, to do a meet and greet kind of thing. Any other observations or thoughts about how you yourselves have been crafting online synchronous pieces? Things that, you know, things that were like an aha moment. Beth? Yeah, I think my biggest challenge is um, with the teachers because there are so many of them that are computer illiterate and um, it's been difficult to get them to understand how to plan. Uh, you know, we don't have to do a lesson plan of two and a half hours for a Sunday session because there, well, there's no way that those kids are going to sit in front of a computer for two and a half hours. It's, we can barely get them to sit in the class in their chair for two and a half hours, nor should we. So it's, you know, that's been my biggest challenge is getting the teachers to feel comfortable enough to set up their own Zoom sessions. Yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do is change it my, on my side and do a Zoom session so that the teachers can break out and their classes into the different rooms. And that way I can jump from room to room to room just to see how everyone's doing. Right. So that, that's been my biggest challenge is the, the computer illiteracy of, of the teachers because they're not, 99% of them are not teachers to begin with. They're, yep. they're there because they love working with the kids and, and, you know, and for the temple. Great. Thank you, Beth. Actually, that sparked for me two things. Number one, um, one of the things that, you know, those of us that have taught online for many years, and obviously even in real, in, you know, in person classrooms, this has now become part of the norm, to think about the flip, what we call the flip classroom, to think about what materials can you give the children beforehand so that they come into the synchronous time prepared. So it's not the, you know, avocational teachers trying to craft two and a half hours or even an hour or even a half hour of activity, but to have some of the lesson plan happen before the children come into the room. Um, so that's something I, I want to urge um, people to think about. The other big thing, Beth, I'm so thrilled to hear you saying about wanting to bounce around into the, into the rooms. I know so many of the ed directors, that's how they're spending their time. And really to urge everybody that this is a blessing and an opportunity that we don't always have to have the time while school is in session to really pop in to as many classrooms as possible. Um, I think, you know, for us, as, for those of you who are ed directors, really use this as an opportunity. And of course, use the opportunity that these um, sessions are recorded to begin to be able to provide support and professional development we haven't been able to in the past. Um, it's, that I think is one of the big upsides of this uh, challenge that we're, they're living in. Thank you, Beth. Right. Well, I sent home um, via snail mail. Um, I went into the office a couple of weeks ago and I sent home via snail mail all of the um, whole school curriculum that is put out by, by Torah Aura. Um, for Passover and for Shabbat for all of the kids. And I sent them specifically to, I, I put the children's names on the envelope, not the parents, um, so that they could get the mail. Okay, and, this is awesome. um, and that way the teachers could also work with them on those things as well um, this past Sunday and hopefully next Sunday as well. So it, I agree with you that to send home packets if you can or email packets from home if you can for the kids to peruse before they go online with their teachers. That really helps a lot as well. Great. Um, any other observations, thoughts? I also, I just realized, I, I think I sort of glossed over sort of the end part of our agenda as well. Um, to, to end sort of with some, you know, spiritual, religious, um, you know, a nishama piece um, with, you know, with having David do the, the blessing to us. 
Um, I personally have been finding that very valuable on many of the both personal and professional calls that I've been on. Um, again, to sort of tap into some of the modalities that we learn from usually and maybe have sort of fallen by the wayside in this virtual community that we now find ourselves in. Um, anything else people want to comment yeah. on? Marion, can I jump in for a second? Yes. <clears throat> so what I really walked away with is, and Susie just wrote something in the chat and Robin talked about it before um, is that it is important to reflect and we also feel kind of stuck now but there is learning for the future there is we need to be forward thinking we need to think about there are great possibilities that um, you know we have discovered as we go forward so I think what I'm trying to say is let's not lose sight of um, the future and the possibilities and the opportunities um, and I know sometimes that can be really hard when you're in the midst of it I think it's important for um, for our students for our teachers for our family for ourselves Thank you. Deborah, did you want to say something? I'd love to share something. <clears throat> um, inspired by a Boston Haifa connection, um, Zoom, and hearing that people there can access their mail, I felt like, wow, well, we still can. I'm doing this. So I sent packets to my students at TBZ Religious School. And yesterday morning, we had a model Seder, and it was so fun to see them using the things and showing them off, so. Awesome, awesome. All right, I'm respect I wanna be respectful of everybody's time. Um, again, I just am so appreciative of your time this morning. I'm so appreciative of the things you brought to the call. Um, and of course, I'm so appreciative of my colleagues for uh, helping craft this morning. And of course, to provide the content as well. Um, I'm, again, I'll keep the room open for a few minutes if people want to chat. Um, really lovely to see everybody. Wishing everybody a Chag Kasher V'Sameach, a season of joy, even in this challenging time. Something's going on with my charging here. I don't know what it is. Or maybe the Zoom just takes a whole lot more. Well, maybe that's it. I bet it takes a lot. I need to go plug this in. Am I going down? Hug some of everyone. Maybe you're uh, muted. Thank you. Hug some Thank you. It's nice to see everybody. Thanks, Susan and uh, Marion. And I think that uh, Michael already left. So. Hag Sameach and uh, yes. Hag Sameach, everyone. Hag Sameach, Susan. Thanks, Thanks Thank everybody. Ruth, Ruth, what, where else do you teach besides uh, Makor? I teach both in Makor and Prozdor and in Kesher. With Kesher Newton? Kesher Newton, and I used to teach in Kesher in Porter Square years ago when I first came here. Great. Well, <laughs> nice to have you. Nice to meet you. Thank and you so much. It was fun. Thank you. Debbie, where, where do you teach? Oh, you said TBZ. That's a TBZ school, Temple Emanuel Religious School, and Olive Bet Preschool. Beautiful. Yeah, well, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Samaya. Thanks, Samaya.